I wonder if we could start with um, a conversation that, that uh, in some ways got cut short uh, earlier this week. You and I were uh, in church on Sunday morning, and there was a, a person uh, sitting behind us before the service mm -hmm. uh, with whom we struck up a conversation. And when he learned uh, uh, what you think about and what you do, he, he, he told us that he was a, uh, a high school physics teacher, and so he'd, he'd done some thinking about uh, the soul and about science. And, um, and he mentioned that uh, he, he was, I think, glad to hear that you believe in a soul. Uh, <laughs> and and he, he too uh, confessed his belief in a soul. And, and said that this was his main reason for being worried about evolutionary theory. He thought mm -hmm. he, he just sure. couldn't buy yeah. evolution because he couldn't see how it would ever kick up something like mm -hmm. an immaterial sure. soul. And your response to him had to be short because the service was about to start. You said something like, uh, well, I can help you with that. And, <laughs> and then the service started. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. How would that conversation have unfolded uh, had there been more time? Well, I think it would could be helpful for him and for uh, other people for that matter, to realize that there is a conception of the soul, uh, one that you know I advocate actually, but a conception of the soul that uh, does the things that Christians I think need, need to attribute to a soul, but that does not create the kinds of problems with evolution that uh, you know he obviously felt to be the case. Most uh, I think a majority of Christians have held the view that each individual human soul is directly, individually created by God, perhaps at the time of conception or anything, very, very early in one's life. Uh, if then you extend that concept of the soul, as you really have to, to uh, many different kinds of animals, it does become quite difficult, I think, to see how this is going to fit in with a concept of biological evolution. Um, and yet I, I feel, and I'm sure he, feel, he feels some of this too, that um, the evolution, the evidence for biological evolution having occurred is pretty compelling. It's, it's, it's at least strong enough that you wouldn't uh, you know, lightly dismiss it. Uh, the concept that I that I hold, which I call emergent dualism, says that yes, the soul is a distinct entity. It's it's the part of us, the, the aspect of us, if you like, that thinks, that reasons, that has moral awareness, that is able to commune with God, but that the soul, in some admittedly mysterious way, emerges from the biological functioning of the organism, especially uh, the brain and nervous system. Now, some people find this a lot to swallow, but, uh, but I, I don't think there's anything incoherent or contrary to known facts about the view. And one of its merits, not the only merit, but one of the merits is that it fits in pretty smoothly with the concept of biological evolution, because then it, as you have uh, presumably some kind of awareness or feeling or sensation at least is present in quite simple forms of life. Now how simple, we don't have to fix that definitely, but, but it seems to start pretty early on. I think when, when you step in a wasp's nest uh, the wasp is really angry at you. <laughs> he certainly acts that way, and I believe that it's, uh, it's not an illusion. So, uh, so uh, but as the creatures themselves become more complex, their uh, brains and nervous systems become more complex, and the creature has uh, a, a soul, a, a consciousness, that is generated and sustained, supported by that brain and nervous system, uh, which is also gradually more complex. Now, uh, humans are certainly unique in many ways. I mean, that's, that's a, an obvious fact of the matter. Uh, and we certainly need to recognize that. But on the other hand, there's no reason why the human soul should not be thought of as 
in some sense, the same sort of thing, the same general type of thing as you have in a chimpanzee, a horse, a dog, perhaps a fish, perhaps at a much simpler level in an insect. Um, so you have, you can make sense of this continuity that seems to exist in nature and certainly is affirmed by evolutionary theory and still understand the uniqueness of uh, the human being. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think that that's a perspective that could be helpful to that, uh, that uh, fellow uh, who, as a science teacher, he wants to do justice to scientific evidence, but as a believer, he thinks it's important to believe in a soul, and I think he's right about that too. So uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's how it would have gone if we had another 15 minutes before yeah, the sermon. Yeah, good. Yeah.